Hi guys, so um, the video today is about, <sighs> I almost died a few years ago, this wasn't recent, but it's something that I wanted to share with you. If it may get graphical at times, um, so if you if this is this type of video is not something for you um, please click off of it um, but let's get right into the video. okay guys so few years ago um, I was living in Georgia in a city called Kennesaw that is like 20 minutes north of Atlanta and at the time I had just gotten out of the army and I uh, had a divorce and I you know I had my two children with me so that at that point I was a single mom and um, and I was working and going to school at the same time and uh, I never used to drink water you know that was kind of like the hardest thing for me but I used to eat ice a lot like oh my gosh I would eat ice instead of drinking water and I don't think I was drinking in or eating enough ice to uh, to give me the, the, the amount of water that I need that my system needed so at my job i used to talk to you know my co-workers and um you know i was talking to one of my co-workers one day and she was telling me that uh, i was talking to her about me being um um constipated um all the time and i and i was like you know it, do you know anything that i can take you know a laxative or something like that to help me go to the bathroom because I will go literally five maybe seven days without even going to the bathroom and that was like really really bad so anyway she was like oh there's there's this thing that you can actually do um, and it will take care of it right away and it's called an enema so I was like enema I said how do you do it how do you do that? What is an anima? You know, uh, how do you do it? And then so she basically told me that I can go to Walmart and buy this anima bottle. This like pink, I think, or red bottle. And it comes with the attachments that you could use. And she said that, um, you know, one of the attachment. Oh, my battery is dying. Hold that thought. Okay, so, um, where was I? So, yeah, so she, you know, she, she told me about the enema and she told me that there were um, attachments that I could use if I wanted to do like a douche, there's a, a, an attachment for that. And for the enema, there's another attachment. And so she told me the difference. And so she told me, you know, um, that um, basically how to use it just take the the enema part of it um, fill the bottle with water and I can do that in the tub and just basically put the uh, um, insert the the the, the little tube um, in, in in your bottom and then just let loose the water and it will just flush your system so I said hmm that sounds easy, right? So I went to Walmart and I picked up the animal bottle and I filled, you know, I, I tried to do it over the weekend. So we were getting ready for church. And so my children, um, you know, I had them getting dressed in their room and then, you know, I would get dressed in my room. And my older son, he was um, 10 at the time and he knew he was very smart 
so he know what time we're leaving and um, you know what time they should be ready so I went into the bathroom now and I said well I'm gonna go ahead and try to do this enema thing before we went to church and uh, I went into the bathroom got into the shower and I put the enema bottle you know above you know hanging over the shower and um, I was trying to figure out how I'm supposed to do this so I ended up laying on the floor and I mean not on the floor but in the tub I laid on the tub and I inserted the uh, <laughs> I inserted that little piece into my bottom and then I reached over and um, for the lever and I let loose the water and I went into instant shock I got sick I felt sick I couldn't move I didn't have a voice I was trying to call my kids I couldn't call them I started to sweat profusely I felt like like I was dying literally um, <laughs> I couldn't, uh, I was just dead, lifeless. I just laid there. I could not move, could not call my kids, could not get up to dial 911. I was literally helpless. So I just laid there, basically, you know, just hoping that someone would come in, my kids or something will come in and, and find me and help me. So I could hear my son calling me because he knew what time we were supposed to leave for church. And that time has passed. And he was like, you know, Mom, where are you? And I typically don't close my rooms. I would close the door, but I never lock it, you know. And to this day, I don't lock my doors. I just, I just close the door and that's it. I'm not putting the, the lock on there or anything. So, except for the outside door, of course. So anyway, um, my son, you know, he went into my room. He was calling. He didn't hear me. So he went into my room. And then he was calling and calling and he didn't hear me. I, I, I wanted to answer him. I tried to answer him. But I did not have a voice. I lost my voice. So he came into the bathroom. And he saw me literally died half dead and he called me and I couldn't answer him he's like mom are you okay and I was able to you know basically shake my head like that and he was like you want me to call 911 and I went like this so he went and he called 911 now <laughs> A police officer showed up at my house before the ambulance came, right? And so um, he came, my son let him in the house, and he came in to the bathroom and he saw me. And he asked me if I was okay, and I, was, I sh shook my head. And he asked me, what was wrong and I tried to talk I was able to whisper but I couldn't speak so he came closer to me and I whispered to him and I told him even though the bottle was still hanging and the tube was still there he could clearly see what was going on with me but what he did changed the course of how I was treated and how I almost died. I told him, I whispered to him and told him exactly what happened. So he, he looked me in the eye. He tried to, you know, see, you know, my eyes and my pupils were pinpointed. They dilated and they would not retract. He shined light in my face, in my eyes. Of course they hurt because my pupils were wide open. 
and uh, he went into my room and started searching. He started searching my house, looking for drugs. And I'm like, why is this guy looking for drugs? I told him exactly what happened to me. So, a few minutes later, the ambulance came. And I can overhear him tell the technician that there's a druggie. Look like she overdosed on something and she's laying in there. <laughs> they came, they put me on the stretcher. They didn't try to help me at all. I tried to whisper to them to tell them, the technicians, what was going on with me. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even take the time to listen to me. So at the time, of course, I was a single mom and, um, <laughs> you know, the, the, they were trying to figure out what to do with my, my children. And so um, I was able to motion them to look in my purse and I had a, an address book in there and there is a, one of my coworkers, I had her phone number and I told them to give her a call and tell her what the situation is and she will take my kids for me. They did that. And so the, the ambulance took me away and left my kids with the, the police officer. And the police officer would turn over my kids to uh, my coworker once she gets there. So anyway, they took me to the hospital and they got me into a room. Now, all this time, nobody tried to help me. Nobody at all tried to help me. I was so weak, I couldn't do anything to help myself. Nothing at all. I had nobody to help me, right? So, they left me there in the room. And uh, I was probably there for maybe a half an hour or so and I wanted to use the bathroom so bad. Like I felt like I really have to defecate. I really needed to get to the bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to be graphical. So I was like, okay, how am I gonna get to the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? You know, who's gonna help me? So at this point, I got a little bit of strength back, you know, just a, so, what I did was I rolled myself off of the bed and they didn't have the arms up or anything. They just left me there like a dead meat. So I was able to roll myself and fall off the bed because that's, that's the only thing that I could do. I really didn't have, you know, any strength or anything. So anyway, I dragged myself on that dirty hospital floor and I looked to see where I saw the sign for a bathroom. I literally crawled and dragged myself to the bathroom and nobody seemed to care. Nobody tried to help me. <laughs> so anyway, I took my I got myself to the bathroom and I was able to get on the toilet and I tried to to poop. And it was nothing but blood. There was blood. I was bleeding out. And I was scared, I was terrified. It's like, oh my gosh, like all my, bl all my blood is coming out. So, used the bathroom and I went back in, you know, crawled back and got back into the room. A few minutes later, maybe another half an hour or so, I really, really, really had to go again. And I did the process again. And when I, get, I went, went there, same thing, I was pooping blood. I I got back into the room and I was able to get myself back um, on the bed somehow. And at that point, I realized that I was going to die and I had nobody to help me. And I wanted to make sure that somebody knew what to do with my children because <laughs> we were all alone. It was just me and them. And so finally somebody came into the room 
and he was just talking you know and I said um, at that point I had a little bit of voice and I said to him sir I'm going to die and I want you to help me I need to make some arrangements for my children and I'm asking you for your help and he turned to me and he's like you're not dying you just overdosed on something but you're not dying I was like I am not overdosing on anything I told them exactly what happened the police told him his his version and he wasn't there and they believed him and nobody I've been here for an hour and nobody tried to help me I've been pooping blood all this time I said do me a favor put on a pair of gloves he put on a pair of gloves I said take your pinky finger and stick it in my butt he was like okay so he did and when he pulled his his finger out blood just gushed out he was like oh my gosh oh my gosh I was like yeah I am bleeding internally I am dying and nobody seems to care so <laughs> At that point, the hospital, he ran out and all of a sudden, now I'm getting attention. All of a sudden, doctors and nurses and everybody is coming, right, to my aid. So anyway, they ended up hearing me of what I told them that happened to me. And then they gave me this white, liquid, nasty, chalky thing to drink. Oh my gosh, I could not even hardly drink it, but I had to. I asked them what was the reasoning <clears throat> that I should drink this thing and they said that they needed to see inside of my body what is going on what damage was done to me so I drank it and then they took me away to do an MRI and they came back and said that I ripped my colon all the way to my liver that thing sliced me all the way to my liver and I, I mean I ended up <laughs> I ended up spending a whole week in the hospital so after the week you know I went home and my co-worker she brought my kids back and at that point, you know, I needed fresh food in the house and whatever. And so, you know, the kids were, were hungry and it's just me and them again. So I was still weak because this is the first day I'm back out of the hospital. And the whole time I was in the hospital, I couldn't eat food. And so I said, okay, well, I'm gonna have to drive myself to the grocery store and get groceries, right? So I got myself up and the two children and I was able to get to the car, get to the grocery store. I got to the grocery store and I could barely make it. I was expanding energy that I didn't have. So I was able to get a few. I didn't stay long because I just wanted enough things that they can eat and you know easy to fix or whatever so we got everything and on our way back to the car at this point I was literally I was so weak I could barely move I made it to the car and once I got to the car I just fell over I passed out in the parking lot still had the hospital band on and then I woke back up and I saw my 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 two children were there 
and this elderly couple and they were there to help me and I heard my son telling them that you know my mom you know she just got out of the hospital and we were just trying to get some food and you know she got weak and she she just fell and passed out and <laughs> I don't know these people from a can of paint you know they don't know me and so the lady you know she came to me and she said you know how far do you live and I said I don't live very far because I didn't live I lived literally like five minutes away from the grocery store so she said I want you to trust me okay I'm gonna get you home and your children but you have to trust me At that point I don't know you know what what to do I mean I'm in in a, in a position where I could not help myself so what else can I do but to trust them and trust that God would take care of me and my children so her husband took my kids in their car and then she came, she put me in my car and she drove my car and my son I, and I tell you he's smart enough he was able to give them the address and tell them exactly where we lived he was able to navigate um, to let them know where we lived and so we didn't have GPS and all that stuff you know we didn't have all of that but anyway we got to the house and they got me into the house and I don't know if they were guardian angels or what I've never never got their information they never took my information I never saw them again but let me tell you I don't know where these people are but if in 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 the world anywhere if you see this video I want to say thank you so much those me and those two little boys you saved us thank you thank you thank you and I'm telling you <laughs> that is the worst feeling when you almost you feel like you're gonna die and there was nobody there to help you okay guys so that is my story I'll see you in my next video bye guys